I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. If we do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust I understand there's an eclipse that's going to be happening soon. I, I'm super oh, not excited. Fuck. I don't. I really don't care about it. Like, yeah, right? people are yeah. flipping out and so into this, and it's probably there's a like, good chance it's going to be cloudy and no one will be able to see anything anyway. Yeah, I. I got a real problem. I work right by the premier highway exit to get into Niagara Falls. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You got state of emergency uh, land yeah. going on over there, huh? Police yeah. state. And I got nobody's, whoop, whoop. nobody's pulling the trigger on shutting us down either. They're like, nah, y'all will be good. Yeah. It's happening It'll in take Canada. A little too. While. Yeah. It is happening in Canada where people are being weird about it. And like, what, what, you know, why are they telling us all this stuff? What, what, uh, what, what could be going on? Like, Does it really what, mean? What? Well, because it's like there are people saying, like, you know, be careful on the eclipse. Don't stare at the sun. There's no traffic. <laughs> I, it could be busy. And they're like, well, what's, what's all this? Inf- what do you mean police are going to be out? Yeah, well, the police out is a little weird, but that's just because a million people are going to, like, descend upon Niagara Falls. Like, e- yeah, exactly. it's a great spot for a terrorist attack. <laughs> is that a hint? That, that, a- that doesn't go unspoken. I mean, people are saying it, right? You know, right, right. Give me, I'm gonna give you the Trump speak. Yeah, that. Yeah, then there's like the lock. You know, like this is the this is the new lockdown kind of angle. Like, uh, you know, they're trying to they're trying to there's keep people so, in their home. So it's because it's a free for a concert. lockdown. What lockdown? There's no lockdown. Yeah. No, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but they want to relive like, the glory days. Yeah. Bring back remember oh, when yeah. there was. <laughs> yeah. Remember when well, we yeah, had something is, to fight against? They're like closing some streets so that they can have emergency access but you can go there like f- of your own free will anytime you want yeah all the messaging is like if you're driving and there's an eclipse that's that wouldn't be a good thing you could go blind it or it could be really distracting so just be careful think about think about what you're doing yeah plan your day that's yeah. like normal that's like also don't stare at eclipses because it burns your retinas it's not a it's not a it's not an optional it's not a conspiracy it's a, yeah, back in, you I'm know what? Saying, yeah, I'm going to say, you know what? It is a conspiracy. Oh. Stare at the eclipse and find <laughs> out find if out the, science find is out the real. Truth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's find out if science is real. I like that challenge. Because, yeah. yeah. That's like, a real this challenge. Is, be a man. Just another thing to be politicized. Like, yeah, just do it. Yeah, don't don't take yeah, that do from, uh, from, you the, don't have from to, the woke you know, left. You don't have to listen to the libtards. No. You, no. Yeah, stare Fuck directly science. at the sun. Yeah. You saw what racist grandpa did. It worked out for him. Go ahead. Exactly. Militia. That's right. Nothing happened to him. He took ivermectin. Listen. Bring mm. up the whole militia. Get your boys. Yeah. Fire off rounds into the sun. Perfection. Just have a good time. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to see Exercise here. Exercise your freedom. No such thing as climate change while you're at it. Yeah. Well, this it's yeah. I mean, don't get me started on how this is all connected, man. It's uh, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's dumb. It's fucking dumb. <laughs> it's so fucking like. Oh, also I, YouTube algorithm that was uh, called sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and I shared with you today those uh, those 1950s Panavision uh, versions of TV movie trailers. Like, for, uh, you guys beautiful. The, yeah. I I love how they. So the the one that I sent today was about like the Avengers and like. Da, 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 da. Witness Captain America and they're all they're all throbbing like it's tr- it's truly like an acid trip um, <laughs> like people like everyone's sort of melting and kind of uh, um, but it looks so crisp at the same time like that's the most eerie part about AI is it's it's crisp immateriality uh, it's 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 fascinating uh, it's like a lava lamp uh, like yeah. a really really awesome lava lamp. I like to imagine that that's how AI thinks humans will enjoy <laughs> experiencing reality and that there's just that like slight disconnect. It's fun to think about. Yeah. Do we look like this? What? To the robot. To the robot. To it? Yeah. Well, that, that does a pretty good job. It just can't. It gets a little weird around the edges, right? Uh, it doesn't know how to define things. 
Like it doesn't actually exist. So it's, it's having trouble with reality. <laughs> um, yeah. Which anyway, makes it the most but, human of all. Ah, uh, there we go. Wow. Uh, I don't know how to use that to uh, transition to the Rambo. Who else oh. is the most human of all? Rambo. <laughs> Rambo. I was going to say, what franchise has trouble with reality? Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So here on the Extinction Agenda with. Uh, sorry, I just watched Rambo pick up the, the, the lamb or whatever off of a horse um, with uh, James. Uh, James uh, and Chris. There we yes. go. Uh, we're talking Rambo 3 because uh, we're punishing ourselves, I think, a little bit. This is our uh, this is our penance. Uh, there's a mission and to complete. Our, and and our duty. Yeah. Okay. Fucking right there this was. Is, this isn't even the end of it. There's like, are we, like we should talk about whether we're going to do the the Rambo movie, like Rambo 4, I guess it is. <laughs> uh, oh, that one's good. It gets better reviews than this does. So. Yeah. And the yeah. politics are going to be just oh my goodness so oh, yeah I kind of be a bit more aggressive yeah yeah I feel like well we've the, already need... done Rambo lives again or whatever right yeah yeah, yeah. Last Blood Last yeah. Blood yeah yeah that one was woo oh yeah that's yeah. a real treat yeah so anyway Rambo three um yeah. uh, this this movie came out uh, Mar May twenty what what the fuck was it May twenty fifth uh, 1988 so we're almost up on some sort of anniversary on this thing um and didn't do as well as rambo 2 i can't imagine why uh, uh but it well, was still very successful and cost a lot of money really? not sure where the money went yeah apparently it was the most expensive movie according to wikipedia it was the most expensive movie that would had been made up to that point and i'm oh, that's fucking oh, how? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, where's the money on this thing? I guess in the explosion? Do they go to fucking Afghanistan for real? Like, that's the only thing I could think of. Well, it was apparently, filmed in... Uh, apparently a $12 million, like, fighter plane was part of uh, Stallone's requested pay. Um, oh, not a fighter, fighter not a fighter plane. Yeah, it was no. just the, the air stream, the air, wait, the streamliner? What was that? It's a a fancy private jet. Right, right, right. Yeah. So like yeah. he got that. So I bet that was just kind of rolled into the cost of the film. Yeah. What just yeah. for himself to float around? Yeah, yeah, flying around and stuff. He was a big star. star but power. I guess they do have helicopters yeah. and tanks in this movie. So maybe that's actual money that pays for that, right? Um uh, yeah. and explosions galore. Jeez. Oh yeah. Uh yeah, so this movie directed by the um Peter McDonald, who was the uh, second unit director on um, uh, Rambo 2, he was the one that, that filmed the final helicopter scene. And so I was a little excited when I found that out because I was like, oh, he knows how to. That was good, man. That was a really great sequence. Um, and so I thought maybe there'd be some good stuff here. And there kind of is. It's real meat and potatoes, though. This guy's a meat and potatoes fella. Not sure what you would want else than meat and potatoes in a movie like this but i feel like this is tr very true to rambo like the Ra rambo's character okay this is All right. this is what i expect rambo to behave oh. like go on that's so, a, that's that's about it <clears throat> what like <laughs> like based it, like just I, like his base I, personality this is this is on this i feel like it's on track yeah i know i disagree right. with that there's yeah, a bit, I think so. oh really? <laughs> well, I, feel yeah. like, I feel like you're missing what you're missing is no one's trying to screw him at all. That's true. It, so it, that's well, confusing to me. Like that's the whole point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even like when Kirk with Smith was like, "We're gonna deny," you know, if you get caught, we're gonna deny everything. He's like, oh, "That's okay. I'm used to it." It's like, no, you're not. The basic essence of Rambo is that you are super not used to being screwed over. You're still pissed off about <laughs> being betrayed by your country. You blew up. Like the last time we saw you, you destroyed like expensive government equipment and like threatened a general. I don't think you're cool with this. But he has been spending time with monks, so maybe like there's been well, some that's reversal. It. What yeah, fucking that's... monks? Well, he's with the with yeah with um what would 
the kung fu thai buddhists thai buddhists yeah, how did we get from temple. thailand to afghanistan well he's afghanistan. in Viet- he was in vietnam i guess when last we saw john rambo he walked out into the sunset uh at in vietnam i think uh and fussing about the troops and i guess he just you know he walked over to cambodia no or thailand sorry well, he and was in thailand in part two before going to he? vietnam yeah that was oh like the yeah landing, the landing point it's just like a that's just like a spot he likes oh you're right okay all right hmm. which is fine with me like i like like thailand looks dope i really liked his life there it was nice for him you know a little pit fighting and then a little uh-huh. like yeah a little to... stick fighting and then i see he's going with the monk in the boat so he yeah. does actually just hang out with monks in between stick fighting and he's giving yeah, he, stick well, fighting money to the monks yeah 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 so like he's just fighting as part of his religious he's devoted himself in, in a new way like okay so fine you can you can point to that and say this is a different rambo he's purified now of all of his <laughs> hangouts and stuff um <laughs> <laughs> but I still can't. And and the Rambo two. I w- uh, how about this? The intelligence that we saw that was introduced in Rambo two has disappeared from this Rambo. You know, like That's he's not take, he's not taking in, in his his environment in the same way. He's like he, like he's hid that withdrawn taking in my environment, figuring out how to survive in any given moment. All that's gone, and it's just replaced with this like this kind of hang dog fake wisdom. Uh, world weariness uh, that just like this the, maturity man <laughs> whatever character we saw back in first <laughs> first blood is is well and truly gone and and like can we say that his character is developed over time like it doesn't feel like it feels like they they took a character and there was there was some similarity between one and two right but they made him more intelligent but he was still withdrawn and we were like okay um, and like now, now none of the past is there except in words. Um, and Troutman, but I don't really, I don't even buy the relation, like the, the character moments between them were so shocking to me. Like you, like, you know, when, in the final 45 minutes, when the action would pause for a second for him to say a line or like a, a one liner, you know, like, yeah. Oh my God, he still talks. Like it just felt weird and like forced. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we just disagree this is a different character, but it's definitely okay. But it's still Rambo. Yeah. Uh, the the what what does that mean though? Does that mean like Rambo is whatever? Ram, Rambo isn't a character. Is that what essentially what we're we're sort of discovering here? He's the um, purified fighting skill capable of taking on the soldiers of an entire nation. I think that that might be the the refer, the the essence uh, of Rambo. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel as though he's trying. He's succeeded in partial retirement, and and this is this is just a sort of a it's like a geared down version. And I think I think you guys are being overcritical. No, we're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's not. He's not lost his intelligence. He's fully capable. He's, he's capable just fine, but like the what you name a scene for me in this movie where mm. that is comparable to when he's in like the, uh, the radar room, you know, like in that big computer room. And he's mm-hmm. basically like, he's like, you know, like we've got all the best computers that you could possibly have. And Rambo's like, yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, I thought human intelligence was the best, you know, like there's this, I don't know. It's like, there's nothing like that. Like he's, he's fine. I just watched the scene yeah, where the blue light scene. No, <laughs> they're, <laughs> the they're famous, <laughs> <laughs> they're going they're infiltrating they're going under the trip wires and stuff like that right now like i'm watching it and he's and he's you know he's digging ahead with his knife to try to find trip wires or landmines and uh you know that's fine he he does military tactics but honestly these are we might even say that these things are new that we're seeing from him like uh what what the intelligence in the previous movies has been replaced with with um I don't know, good training, right? Like, he's just a good soldier. You know what's weird, too, about this? I Like, kind of dawned on me is that, like, Rambo's thing, what is his essence? He is the ultimate jungle, like, warfare fighter, the ultimate camouflage guy, like, just, like, basically a ghost um, yeah. that will fuck you up. 
and then like he's not cut out for the he's not really trained in this environment it's like open deserts it's like um you know mountainy terrain and I, it feels like he's somewhat out of sorts like a, what does he do in this movie a lot of the time he ends up standing in place firing like burst mode the directly into like a uh, another person shooting at him yeah yeah and so so all that stuff disappears too there's never any like like well yeah like when when he he disappears into the environment and and kills a bunch of guys with his bare hands like like nothing like that occurs and so in spirit this movie it doesn't feel like a like at Rambo as we've understood it at this point and it's just transformed into into something else um it, it, this is part of the and the cartoon that we're going to talk about as well is part of this as well it is the slow transformation of what was once like a criticism of the Vietnam War uh and and an attempt to like bring some sympathy to the soldier and it, it up to Rambo 2 then it then it becomes about the sort of the payback of the soldier and the you know support the troops and at this point he becomes just like american imperialism uh and america's own like Im- imagination of it itself as these badasses who go out and and protect the innocent in foreign countries um you know policemen of the world and all that stuff and so like like rambo's transformation is not a transformation of character but a transformation of ideology uh, which is why these movies fascinate me so much, even though like this movie's trash, like fucking up and down trash. It's boring, <laughs> but like it's interesting. Uh, I like I like to see this progression. Um, yeah. Steve, did that's, you respond to that? Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you know, I, I w- one thing I did find like kind of fun was the um, uh, this weird like sort of like apologetic um like take on on like afghanistan because this is prior to 9 11 right oh yeah so it's just like (laughs) it's it's just like it 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 touts the taliban and the afghans as as like 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 brave like a brave like a brave peace corps that's, hmm. that's just defending their own lands from the from like like the Russian regime, mm-hmm. um, and that's very very stark contrast from from what we have today, which which makes you really think about our own like propaganda machine, you know? Can't, yeah, man. You can't, you can't help but think, hey, hey, man, how did my friends here turn into uh, like a monstrous uh, machine of, of evil? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, according to my point. own media, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah. That, I I find that really like sort of neat to see that. Yeah, there's a couple neat things down that front. Like the yeah, America's this time is supporting the Mujahideen. Um. And in like they actually are providing stinger missiles and that's sort of stuff. Like there's a proxy war occurring. Um, I went and I looked like what else was happening? What was happening in the year 1988? I was a little, I was a little, I got, I got curious and I went. So the irony of this movie is like May 25th, 1988, Rambo three comes out, but in May 15th of that very same year, the Soviet Afghan war begins to end. Um, like the Afghan war is literally coming to an end at this point, this point, uh, Russia's pulling out. So we saw Rambo three. I, yeah, well that was it. I was like, what, did Rambo win? <laughs> did he do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, another, another, uh, just, you know, just by the by, um, perestroika is beginning on January 1st of this year. So Russian, like the, the cold war is literally coming to an end as this movie is, uh, like fighting so hard against the Russian enemy again, cause Rambo won. Mm. Um, Oliver North is indicted for the Iran Contra scandal. Oh shit! And, uh, in uh, well, shit, I didn't write down the month. And then I didn't realize like skyjacking used to be a big thing. Like there was in the year 1988, two at least two airplanes were fucking skyjacked. One airplane had the like this is not a skyjacking related thing, but like one airplane, the roof fucking came off. Uh, five people died. Oh, 68 people were injured. Um, and I'm just thinking of like Boeing's troubles nowadays, like a door opened or whatever, like, wow, things used to be different. Um, 
air travel used to be uh, a little more dicey. I think I think historical memory, you know, we it goes down the rabbit hole. Um, uh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, that's I don't what, know a lot about called. skyjacking. Oh, it was a ton. It was a huge thing uh, in the 80s. You know, international terrorism. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, so Rambo's the, coming in to deal with all that shit. Yeah, but like I feel like this type of movie now, now that you've like now that you've decided you've you know you've lost your 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 speaking point on Vietnam and you've mm-hmm. still got your Rambo, then it just becomes sort of a like you, like you say a meat and potatoes. It's it's now a crime of opportunity. Who are the bad guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like the Russians are still the bad guys, so we can do that, and then, <laughs> and then, as we graze through, we'll we're gonna find new bad guys. Uh, I hopefully in Rambo, Rambo, self-titled Rambo, the oh, fourth one. Oh, we definitely one. do. Um, and then um, we, we that that's what moves us into uh, who are the bad Mexico. guys? Mexican rapers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, um, so yeah, that's it's, a, you, you gotta, you, you know, you just move from A to B on that. It's not, uh, not tough. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. kind of a reactionary like element of, and that's what I found it really interesting as you were saying the, um, the fact that the Afghans are really sympathetically portrayed, and like you even get like a little bit of, you know, a little history lesson. Uh, you know, like they've been fighting over this uh, place forever. That these people will never surrender um you get you get like it's just sort of sympathetic take to the plight of the afghan people um and i think it really like this is the only probably the only movie that treats the other in a in a sort of like in a way with that except it's their humanity but it's probably i feel like that it's probably a part because you need to build communism up as the bad guys, you know, like you, you need to understand yep. who who's under attack in order for in order for people to care about it. Oh, just good people. Good Joes, man. Yeah. Good hard fighting Joes, just like That's Americans right. during the revolution. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. Nice portrayal of a little cave walk, you know, so the, they know the lands, you know. Look at him. Yeah. yeah, sorry, he's doing a prison break right now. Anyway. I like the um the child soldier too. Like that I almost I was wondering if that was like a little nod to like how popular Rambo was with kids. Like, yeah, let's let's put a kid in there. Oh, this this kid fights yeah, got, the soul of a warrior. Yeah. It got a little it got a little Indiana Jones ish, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. Sort of yep. uh like a bro guide and a uh and then a, and then a little it's a little kid action and you know, I can see my uh it's just it just became like a fucking Scooby Doo. You know what? It, this was the year before the Last Crusade came out, and I swear that this movie had to have had some influence on those, especially those scenes. You like when uh, when Indy like takes on the tank in the desert, and uh, apparently he's mm. even riding the same horse that Rambo rode. Oh, no fucking shit. Yeah, you think no Spielberg kidding. was like yeah. I checking so. out peter mcdonald's hot action like, i honestly think that, that that there was some inspiration there yeah like for that oh movie. he was like if i can do that so much better that's that's Probably. gotta be I what he was that's, thinking that's, yeah yes, that's yeah absolutely. well that's what yeah. happened yeah artist yeah. Feel, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like that's a great idea but this sucks i'm gonna just gonna <laughs> take that and i'm gonna do a much better job of it thank you so much peter mcdonald uh i love that idea i love that reading i'm like true or not it's true i'm taking it (laughs) (laughs) i will accept no counter evidence this is this is this is the truth of the agenda yeah yeah head cannon extinction head cannon uh steven spielberg ripped this movie right the fuck off if it's true or not it's true yeah How'd you feel about the uh, stick fighting at the beginning, James? Let's let's rewind a little was, bit. We really we really oh, fucking jumped into this movie. It was awful. Um, it, it they didn't. It was like they used. They was they used like trying to use quick cuts, but apparently has no ability to film a martial arts fight uh, at all at all. Um, oh so, wait, Sylvester Stallone's bodybuilding was on display. That's about. Oh it. yeah, yeah. The um, what's his nose? Peter McDonald filmed this himself on a handheld camera in in Thailand. So like it's it's very different than the rest of the movie. It's it, uh, very different attitude. 
and or or like like um scope of it it's very closed in uh i yeah I, I did, that doesn't mean it's good but uh because no i didn't even the, see this oh sorry go ahead no, i was gonna say i didn't even see the sticks make contact with each other right it was it was a tire fire yeah like they were yeah, clearly they're... trying to avoid anyone being touched or injured or doing any kind of choreography at all yeah and they're teaching they're they're treating it like a sword fight you know like there's that moment where they're like they've got the sticks against each other and they're pressing pressing in i was like what what is this why would you do that um (laughs) and yeah yeah it's 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 very bad um and all of it you're you're right like it's meant to like evoke a sort of chaos um, you'll be unsurprised to find out that the screenwriter of this also wrote Bloodsport, which came out the very same year. Cyborg, um, oh, Double beautiful. Impact, you know, like, so... Oh, so wow. Is, yeah, does, uh, Legionnaire. Uh, so this is all, um, this is all meat and potatoes, again, for, for that crew. Um, what was the guy's name? Sheldon Ledich or something like that. Him and Rambo, and him and Rambo... <laughs> Him and Rambo wrote this movie. Him and I would Stallone. say of the movies you just described, Cyborg yeah. would be the most ambitious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, Easily. Oh, that's an odd yeah. script. You know, really. Yeah. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, that one was supposed to be like Masters of the Universe 2 or some shit, right? Am I, was uh, it? Oh, that's my recollection. My recollection is that Cyborg Jesus. emerged from a, from an attempted sequel at uh, He-Man. I fuck. I don't know if that's true. I, that's what's in my head right now, though. Wow. So if even if it's not true, it's true. Extinction Agenda rules apply. In, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> anyway, yeah. You heard it here fighting, first. Yeah. The the only time the stick fighting turns into anything interesting is. Um, when they start doing these really big movements, you know, sticks to the stomach and these uh, spin kicks and stuff. But um, mostly it's trout and trying to look over all the people, you know, trying to see what's going on. Um, anyway, I, I was just curious. Um, it's called Krabby Krabong, the martial art or whatever, which is a really unfortunate name for what they were doing. But, wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't really think that I, I don't feel like sly had any idea of how to move or fight no no he really doesn't i never got the impression that he was very good at anything outside of like gun handling like in in his action career like yeah yeah oh i see what you're saying yeah because he's never like think back to demolition man or something like that movie is not hot fire for the for the fist fights uh, no, he, like, he's a physically dominating kind of presence, even though he's yeah. kind of a little short ass. But um, <laughs> no, I said it. And yeah. uh, but but like <laughs> but really, like overall, like like his physicality and stuff is is all it is, because it's he doesn't seem to be like overly uh, coordinated or really even athletic, like just sort of like and, and he doesn't know how to fight. That's clear. Um, yeah. How about Rocky, guys? I, you know, I, it kind of makes me want to go back and watch Rocky and figure out how they filmed those boxing matches. Because, like, if it's anything like the fight that we just saw, there's a lot of, like, camera facing, like, Raging Bull style, like, directly at um, Stallone as he's throwing punches at nothing, as he's sort of shadow boxing. That's probably true. Yeah, yeah, that's 100% what's happening. And also, any any type of, like real athleticism or movement was leaned in on uh, Weathers. Oh, you think Carl Weathers just carried the day on that? That's... He carried it. <laughs> he carried it on his fucking back. Uh, typical, typical fucking reactionary politics, too. They're like the white... It's the uh, it's the white hero narrative built on the, <laughs> the back the back of a black worker. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I said it. Yeah. It was good. Uh, yeah. Um, the truth hurts. <laughs> I found out. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry. There actually is a, a thread there that I wanted to to pick up. The um, twins came out December ninth, nineteen eighty eight. So this movie had already been released uh, several months earlier. And there's a scene where there's a poster for Rambo three, 
and Stolo- or Schwarzenegger comes up and you know like you guys remember twins at all am i the only yeah, person yeah. who's watched that movie a million no, times of course. um uh, and- wow <laughs> and he comes up uh uh, Schwarzenegger comes up and he like he's kind of a naive big guy you know he's the perfect sort of person he's been trained uh, to be like a big good person and uh, he, he looks at Stallone's biceps and then he looks at his own and then he like waves them off it's a nice little <laughs> easter egg um, but it's typical of of what's going on here like there's no reason for Rambo's body to be on display in the way that it is in this movie oh. he's shirtless there's super no yeah you would he would be so sunburned. Like, that guy's dying of cancer at, like, 45, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And I was, like, and, and it did just circle back to, like, the He-Man thing. I was, like, I'm, like, where where did this shirtless thing come from? Because, like, Dolph Lundgren's doing it in, um, in He-Man, essentially, which is, a, I think, a year before this. He-Man um, calls for it, in all fairness. Oh, it absolutely does. Yeah, because he's he's like a Tarzan character. He's a barbarian or a Conan, right? He man is Conan. Um, they even based some of the images off of uh, um, Frazetta, right? But so he's kind of like a He Man character at this point. They've they've grafted on like, and then maybe this gets to the childhood uh, connection, like the 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 rated R cartoons for kids things. Like they've like, how do we? How do we sell? Like, what was the rating on this movie? Was this wasn't rated R, was it? R, baby. Really, huh? Yeah, like, I'm yeah, always definitely. shocked. At, for what reason? No, nah, like, man. What? It was apparently the most violent movie ever made at that point. And uh, yeah, uh, you, got, yeah. <laughs> you got your trade. No way. No, because no, Rambo, yeah, Rambo one was way more violent. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, go on. There was bigger explosions in this movie. And nobody um, like dies in Rambo one. Like, oh, well, one person dies, but like he's consciously trying not to kill people in that movie which again is like sort of like well these are enemies like that that rambo is different in a, in a worse situation he's on american mm. soil in the first one but anyway yeah like he's uh <laughs> rambo apologist <laughs> <laughs> i know i know the soul of rambo, right <laughs> these are even yeah. the russians like shooting up innocents and stuff like that it's it's like there's a lot of explosions but it's mostly interpretive that anyone even dies no 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 that's Ex- big russian Gets kicked down that hole with a grenade in his chest. I love that there's sort of like a signature <laughs> Rambo thing where people explode chunkily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is a good thing to continue. Well, yeah, but I, honestly, man, I we got to watch like that didn't happen. I, I guess maybe we got to think about like Last Blood. I don't remember a bunch of chunkily exploded people. Part but. two, yeah, he like uh, he has that standoff with the. Um, I think it's the guy who shot his girl, and then no, he, like, no, I know, I know. <laughs> yes, I know what you're. I know what you're talking about there. I'm, th- I'm talking about like the Last Rainbow Blood. Six or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, there's some yeah. grotesque. Yeah, that was really movie. grotesque. Movie yeah. Trust, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I I like that as a as a through line, you know, to like it's it's basically his version of I'll be back. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's the Rambo experience. Um. The I was really I'm always really charmed with Richard Crenna, even though he's he's so old in this. And like when they have that final. The, OK, there was two cool movies, uh, move, like moments in this movie where I was like, OK, well, that's fucking hard as fuck. I'll put I'll put <laughs> one aside for the moment. The first one the, the, that made me laugh and also it was like so that was so cool was when Troutman. <laughs> He's he's escaped from the prison. Um, Rambo, sorry, Rambo's rescued him from the prison or whatever, and they're they're in a gunfight or something. And then one guy's about to like, I think he's about to kill Rambo, and he, like he grabs him and fucking breaks his neck. <sighs> and he's so skinny and old man looking, like it's really a pathetic comparison between the two of them. But I just love the like the visceral violence of that, like the soldieriness of him. It's very it's a it's an excellent contrast against what Rambo gets up to where like he'll throw a a knife in your chest and he'll shoot you up or he'll punch you in the face. But he never actually does anything that a real soldier would do. Dirty shit. You know, if he does the dirty shit, uh it's nice to see Troutman get up to that. Oh, that's true. That's a good that's a good I don't know, that's a good notice. This did have 
my one of my personal favorite scenes, the gunpowder to the yeah, well uh, that's the other one. Wound. That's the oh, other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Flaming out of both sides, just absolute. I, that stayed with me as a kid, even. For sure. I, I think that's the one thing everyone remembers from this movie. I hadn't seen this movie before today, uh, like like before before we talked about it. But I knew about this scene because I remembered kids in school in like when I was eight talking about this fucking movie. Uh, like their descriptions of it stayed in my mind. Uh, and for whatever reason. Um, and but, yeah, I'd never seen it. And that's it, amazing. It's, uh, yeah. I I thought that was really cool when he like he pushes out the shrapnel or first he pushes it out with his fingers so you're like oh that's some body horror shit and then um, yeah, he's got like his full thumb in there yeah yeah <laughs> you're like Jesus okay so that's why this was rated R um but like that's a part of it for sure it, it but it's so like not it's just gross it's more like like it's like a horror movie it's a very unusual moment in this movie. Uh, and maybe the only thing that that gives Rambo heart in this like that, because uh, that's the thing that everybody remembers. Yeah, I was going to say, too, like every, for the entire rest of the movie, he's in God mode, like he cannot be touched. So, I mean, it you kind of need just, something like that. <laughs> I just watched him break a guy's neck. So aggressive. Like, oh, he did break a guy's neck. OK, <laughs> I take it. Yeah, back he then. snatched <laughs> him out of a out of a turret. And just like fucking like it was really gruesome too. He really fucking the guy was a little guy and he just he, he looks like he's fucking holding on for dear life. Like he's got that yikes look on his face and then Rambo just snaps his head off his body. What's your what's your timestamp on that? I wanna I wanna flip that. That's to gonna it. be uh uh one hour eleven minutes. One eleven, okay. One eleven so, uh Oh he's coming up seconds. Oh, I see he's coming up the mountain, right? Oh, one done. thing, okay. One thing this movie does that is consistent <laughs> with, I think, I don't want to do this, but there's that movie where he's a mountain climber or whatever. Oh, uh, hanger? yeah, cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Yeah, with with John Lithgow is the best. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> hey, fucking don't aces. You ever laugh at John Lithgow? <laughs> no, no, man. Yeah, he he's can be, fucking. You can be terrifying. Yeah, that's that's gonna probably super awesome, but. Uh, the first movie had had uh, Rambo climbing a mountain, right? And this movie did too. Oh yeah, here he's breaking the neck. Ooh! Oh, I take it back. Yeah, he uh, fucking took him out like done. Solid Snake. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Yeah, that guy's terrifying. Genius. Imagine that happened. Oh, that's not the I, way I want to go. No. As a Metal Gear, if I looked this up, and like, cause yeah. so much of the action reminded me of like Metal Gear. Like, it's there's hot infiltration action. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, it's it's good. Um, confirmed. Uh, direct influence on metal gear solid like even the headband uh, is a nod to it uh of you know, course Colonel's supposed to be troutman yeah like yeah. yeah oh yeah that doesn't surprise yeah cur- yeah holy shit yeah i want to suggest though that troutman's a bit of a monster in this like just the the way he goes after rambo and like you know i found inner peace now i'm here with monks like i finally have a place and he's just kind of a poison. Like, you, you can't get away from what you really are, Rambo. You're a fucking killer. Why are you going to come full circle? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But that speech he gives him about, like, the, the like, uh, the, which is, I, in, to my mind, attributed to, like, Michelangelo or something. That idea that, um, you know, the statue was waiting in the block to be That's right. released, you know, and he's like, you're like a fucking classical statue, Rambo. You know, like, it's really, <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's. You're right. Like, like Troutman is, what did you call him? You called him a poison? A poison, yeah. Yeah, he's the he's the desire for war. Like, I think that what they were getting at in Rambo in this instance is, is America's holy, uh, sort of, it's benign reticence to be the policeman of the world. Uh, you know, like, we're, we're, the, we're the ultimate revolutionaries. We're the ultimate badasses of, of the world. And, you know, we, we figured that out in Dub Dub Deuce. And so now, yeah, we exercise it, right? And Troutman is that, that impulse that, that, that speaks to the, to the holy, righteous character of America. Yeah. And says, and it, oh, you got, you got to get your hands dirty. And okay. it sees, it's like, it's, it lives vicariously through the Afghan people like in right to the end where like, you know, like we're, we're getting soft, uh, maybe a little, but you know, it's like, 
yeah, like these yeah. people are f- sticking up against the communists. Like it's, uh, you know, they're they're fighting the good fight. Yeah, it's almost like they're winking at the audience. Like hey, America's yeah. getting soft, huh? Uh, just a little. Actually, we're pretty fucking great still, though, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's a complex moment happening there between the audience and the, and like and and yeah. Like it, it was, it was popular, but I can also understand why this movie wasn't quite popular. Although, um, it wasn't some of the people like where we were talking about like the distinction amongst critics or whatever, you know, uh, and it's kind of one of those opposite situations where you would expect that the, the cheaper critics would look at this movie as trash and the the hoity you know the the hoity toity ivory tower people would be like ah this movie's you know actually no the opposite the the lower class would think this movie's awesome and the hoity toity would would think this movie's trash it's the opposite with this movie uh so far as I understand it from Wikipedia like the New York Times was like oh this is a cowboy movie it was pretty great as such huh. um and then yeah Siskel and Ebert more or less kind of they were like yeah this is all right. But everyone else was like, this movie's fucking <laughs> boring. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I bet on the rental market, this baby just cooked. Absolutely. This, this VHS, of it. This VHS of it. is yeah. fucking coming home every weekend. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Because, of course. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that those kids in grade eight didn't see this movie at the theater. Right. <laughs> no, true. Yeah. What do you guys think grade of eight, grade eight, age eight. Uh, what what that would make us like grade two, right? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah th- they're about eight. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. Eight. We just outed ourselves for well, grade three, maybe. Thinking, but yeah. Well, we've been doing that. Yeah, since, two, three. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Like, like, yeah, well, like I remember kids talking about this fucking movie. And so it had to have been on VHS like the year after or so. Um, or maybe it slowly made its way amongst the kids. And gained a reputation as a thing that, you know, like, oh, you know, like, like when we watch Predator, right? Like we didn't see Predator in the in the theater, but the the fucking no. hot second that we could get our our hands on Predator and like watch it in basement parties and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, and it's it's true. Red, like, yeah, just like a myth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, too, with Rambo. Uh, what do you guys think of the Russian commander? <laughs> Not a lot, man. <laughs> he was so fucking generic. Yeah. He's I like him. looking at him right now. It's ridiculous. Like he's wearing. I don't know. They don't know how to dress these people. Like costume needs to be shot for this movie. The, the, this movie's a failure of costume. All over the place. They. Yeah, I, I guess I already said they had a production nightmare on this. Um, apparently Israel was a real awful place to film in so they ended up back in arizona <laughs> oh that tracks yeah. why wouldn't you just film it in arizona to begin with some kind of a, something resembling authenticity i suppose uh yeah anyway that's to dodge your question about the uh, colonel zason yeah uh yeah like i don't know I'm not sure. They're what dressed. They're, like. they're dressed like Colombian revolutionaries. Oh, <laughs> they don't even look like. They don't even look at all like Russian soldiers. Yeah, but there right? was apparently. Did you see the big controversy there? That um, not controversy, but like it was uh, speaking of production issues. Mm-hmm. The the original director of the film had rounded up what Stallone says were like just like twenty pretty boys for the Russians, and he like just wanted them to be just like. Gr- just horrible, like just brutish looking guys. And uh, they got into a fight. He's like, I don't want your male models. Like I'm not fighting. Rambo doesn't care about that. So they dismissed like everybody, including the director. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how you got your Peter McDonald or whatever. Sorry. I, I Yeah. Yeah. The... So that, that, that had to have factored into those production costs too. Cause if you're like on location showing up and being like, yeah, we got to recast. That's gotta be costly. That's really funny that the director that Rambo like he did it like um like a like a propagandist like like I don't want to yeah. fight pretty enemies I fight monsters that's you right know? exactly like I, yeah um he know yeah 
he knows where it's at. That's funny. Uh, you know that that's an approach though. That's a to me that's more of a Nazi approach to have them be like good looking sort of goose stepping kind of guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, well, That's an angle uh, you could take. Yeah, definitely. And you you know, I mean, like, and let's face it, Nazis and Russians are interchangeable. Oh Mal. They they're gonna feel very different about that. But yeah. uh sorry, yeah. Russians, <laughs> stop being scumbags. We yeah. won't be able to interchange you with Nazis. Speaking of scumbags, <laughs> I like I like the motivation of that commander, just like he's bored and he's like trying to torture that American prisoner to be like, Yeah, give us the secrets we could both get out of here. This is like this is not worth my time. I'm too good for this sector. That, yeah, you're right. Because like Troutman, he when he's inter- when he's like interrogating Troutman, he's like, "Look, we could help each other." Essentially, he's like, he's very, <laughs> like, he's very bureaucratic about this. He's like, "This is a fucking shithole, and I need to it's get not out." Personal. You know, he's kind yeah. of a, yeah, he's like Agent Smith. I need to get out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. And Anderson. The, uh, it's the um the fact that like Rambo destroys a, a chopper that like just makes it so personal because like suddenly that that uh, you know this is exactly how Russians are perceived right they need total con- control communist system the so it's mm-hmm. like yeah it's being played out yeah like it's bureaucratic and venal and shitty until yeah. until it's not. Until yeah. like, until you're like oh the red menace represents itself you know and Rambo's uh, just like locked in a death embrace with this dude you know because it's like yeah like that's all he's got left is fighting fighting the communist menace yeah and it's real like never try win but yeah well like but it's it's still like a dick measuring contest between like american special forces and the spetsnaz right yeah Uh, they make they make a real point of talking like these are the, the russian airborne units the greatest creme de la creme in their fucking mincemeat when rambo gets his hands on them um except for the final last big russian boss well yeah it's the big bear man you you gotta gotta respect the russians they got nuclear missiles that's true (laughs) but really the the final boss is uh like a parody of american justice when they like when they come out like he's like if we don't want to hurt you drop your weapons you'll be given a fair trial and they're like i don't think i believe him but yeah it's like well true Troutman submits to that the first time when the helicopter shows up. Like this is like, this is the helicopter move. Oh, that's where, like, true. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, he was like, we won't shoot you. Blah blah blah. I remember thinking I was like, <laughs> yeah. And then he does. He tries to pull the same thing and like, we know He's... we learned your fucking Russian tricks. That wheel kick that he did before hanging the Russian bear and exploding him into bits. That wasn't bad. That was pretty hot. Well, I'm watching them fight right now, I guess. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's rolling around. He's basically like, it's a good ground fight. Like, It's a grimy fight. Sly, like, I know he didn't do all his stunts like that one where they dumped napalm down the hole. That mm-hmm. probably wasn't He didn't him. do that, huh? I doubt well, it. That's, I don't think that's, that's, that's a dicey stunt. Napalm? Yeah, you don't want to be doing that. Um... Yeah, let's see how she goes here. He's, he's wrapping the the rope around the dude's neck. He's still looking a little. He does these vicious elbows that like send him flying. Oh, and Troutman can't get a shot. Oh God. Okay, I I didn't think I'd this blow by blow that I was trying to give would last this long. This <laughs> he's doing this ridiculous. He's doing this ridiculous bear hug thing. It's that's the Russian bear. That's what reps. Oh are. yeah, that's right. He's just like, oh god, Russia is so hard to fight. That's right. Yeah, but he's pulling. Oh, and he's about to succumb, but no, pulls the pin. And I'm committed to this bit, so I'm just gonna keep, keep <laughs> just gonna keep illustrating it, just narrating. Oh, there's the spin. Thank you. There's and the heel the kick. Hole. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, hey, and neck breaks. Oh, Jesus, but and he still, explodes. But still conscious enough to realize that he explodes because his eyes are yeah. wide. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's grimy. That's a, that's a that's bad end. That's very, very Like a good. double death. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get, he, man. Fucking Russia's going to experience it. Yeah. Way to go. And then they go off into the desert and, like, <laughs> this whole fucking thing where a mechanized unit shows up. Oh, my God, yeah. Tanks and a helicopter. And I was like, 
what the fuck is this? Like, uh, we're we're on a full on fantasy land. Oh, it was that point where I was like, this can't be worth it. Just like I barely had the will to finish the movie. I can't imagine trekking through Afghanistan, like <laughs> fighting the whole armor, like a tank and uh, helicopter division. Yeah, there's two tanks. Uh, I'm counting two tanks. Fucking APCs. A fucking uh, hind shows up. Uh, perfectly symmetrical, of course. And and fucking Trumpman standing there, skinny as a bean, holding an HK. And uh, fucking Rambo's got like, I think he's got like an M16 with a rocket launcher underneath. No, no, it's an, a- it's an AK-47. And he's like standing in place while the helicopter's strafing him. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're yeah. just they're just fucking macho talking each other, and you're like, this is pathetic. This is this a superhero is... movie. That's you know, yeah. you just have to yeah, talk yeah. those terms. Yeah, you're like, oh, well, right, we're good to fight these fucking Indians. Let's do it. Like, like when I try to think of it like a cowboy movie, just because of that review that I read, and I, I don't think I can. Um, there's nothing really cowboyish about that. Like there's never, there's no corresponding scene where like someone holds their six shooter and sees like the, the Aboriginal hordes coming at them and like shoots them all down. Um, yeah, no, this, this is like, this is the stupidest like war movie that ever existed. <laughs> I I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know I'm, I'm being really down on this movie, but like. Fuck. I'm a, I'm a, I I thought you were going to almost end it there. <laughs> no, no, cuz we we have a cartoon to talk about. That's right. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um Yeah, how does this movie end though? Okay, so he he does the stuff and the, oh, and he gives the little necklace to the boy. Oh, there's uh, yeah, that. He kept the necklace from the girl. He did. Yeah. And then, then randomly his, gave it to some kid, his child soldier some, friend. His like really like effeminate, beautiful boy friend. Uh, I think that's as close as Rambo gets to being a dad, though. Like he has, he can only have children <laughs> through war. Yeah, war yeah. is his wife. Well, that's the thing. Like, what what are you doing? Like the like the child wears the necklace afterwards, and the necklace represents like <laughs> Rambo like getting you know, like some sort of like holy matrimony. Like I don't understand the symbolism here. Like, and I I. Or maybe I do, and I just I'm made uncomfortable by it. Um, I think <laughs> luck. luck uh, I think. It's luck. The there you go. Yeah. The, there you go. Yeah. Just the kid's wearing it like a choker. You know, it's very uncomfortable looking. It's not like. And it's, it, Rambo. it's uncomfortable that Rambo is like looking upon it after he puts it on as like a like like a weird torch that he's passing like uh, yeah, yeah no exactly yeah this film is dedicated to the gallant people of began- Afghanistan so is that child going to like grow up to I, be I Ram- Rambo now I think you nailed it yeah that is like it's passing on the spirit of Rambo to the the brave warriors of Af- Afghanistan and so ultimately like the the fridging motivation to the Af- Afghani people yeah. is here's the power of fridging for you <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Vengeance. Well, actually, absolutely, because the like when the the horsemen, they're like, we've taken a vow and uh, mm-hmm. we already consider ourselves dead because they've like killed our women and like we uh, you oh, know we're gonna get right. revenge. Yeah. So they are oh, yeah. they are absolutely powered by it. Yeah. So Rambo's like, I've been there. Here you go, kid. Yeah. This will, <laughs> this will power you up with Rambo. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. I guess it's a good transition to. Oh wait, unless you have something else to. No, no, no. You're right. It's a good transition. Good enough. To the yeah, to the good old cartoon. Yeah. I didn't look up a single goddamn thing about these cartoons, but they existed. Oh, I got some stuff. Okay. Can uh, when did they fucking run? Like it's Force of Freedom, like Rambo Force of Freedom. I think it was '86, so it is before this movie. Are you weirdly fucking kidding me? I know, right? Yeah, because it really like this. Yeah, it feels like this it anticipates this movie or it's like inspired by it. Okay, well, talk to me some more about that. That's wild. All right. Well, here's uh, here's something I found. '86. Um, Holy shit. Yeah, 65 episodes. Fuck. And you know what's really weird about that is apparently like mm-hmm. it started. It's supposed to be like um, a five episode limited series. And it was so popular that like they did a bunch oh. of it. But then by, so I think it started in like September and then by December it was canceled. So how popular <laughs> could it have been? 
but it, it became a daily show. I guess like they just oversaturated it. Weird. Well, they used to do that back then. They used like I, I would watch RoboCop, not RoboCop, Robotech every fucking morning, right? That's true. Yeah. It was it was crazy the amount of cartoons that you would get way back in the day, and like they lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened. Um, so it's 65 doesn't seem very weird for 1986. Yeah. Uh, well, but real quick, one we get... season though. Yeah, one, one season. season that's all like that. Holy it fuck! Really, it really burned itself out quick. Yeah. But, um, oh. Two two fun things. This is the studio that created Scooby Doo. Like the um, I forget the names of the the production company, but they were like they actually had uh, pioneered that before starting okay. their own studio. Um, so then within the production studio, uh, I I cribbed this from some like Rambo uh, wiki. Um, yeah. Writers were wondering how they could pre- present a child-friendly main character who was created, <laughs> who is a troubled Vietnam War veteran suffering from PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> and so they That's had a fair oh, question. Jesus. They had child psychologists come in, and they were like, you know what? Kids aren't going to get that. So just don't make any references to Vietnam, POWs, or Rambo's experiences in the first two movies. So that's why you get the whole, like, completely sanitized, like, almost like um, vacuum, uh, like in a vacuum oh, wow. enemy of world, just like a guy who wants world domination. Do they later take it up? Like, I don't the, think so. The, no, I don't think so either. Like, what the thing that struck me about this this cartoon is um, Rambo is not Rambo in this. He's like so obviously they're going for a GI Joe. Like there's yes. there's Cobra and then yeah. and Savage yeah, or, so or you know it's just a yeah it's very it's so um and Troutman in this is like Colonel Colonel Hawk or whatever his fucking name is and but this guy's not Duke. He's like. He's a really blank, like he's a blank nothing. Like he doesn't even have facial expressions. Like I, I, I don't want to attribute autism to this individual, but like, because, <laughs> because, like, I know that that, like, that's inappropriate. But I, I was like, there's no emotion here. There's no like anything resembling humanity. He's just this face that talks in this, in this, like, this oatmeal talk. You know, that that does nothing. You're saying Rambo, um, right? Or Troutman? Yeah, 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 Rambo, yeah, like the actual yeah, Rambo, character in this Rambo's part. weird in this, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking wild. And it's not just the animation that makes him shitty. It's like this this show is devoted to having him be like this this kind of a jolly robot that kind of walks around and, and like, says things. I even noticed by episode two, the guy drops the accent. He was going for this, like... Oh man, it was almost like a he was almost like like a like a New York kind of like there was this like it was a oh, bit of a fucking Robert De Niro accent that he started with in episode one. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of fell off the as he went along, and then he just when he gave that kid that weird lecture about breaking and entering in episode two, um, that that's when it I was like, what the fuck am I listening to? Like, you you got to like, learn to like, grow like, up. Right from the fucking get this, like the literally the first image in this cartoon is his biceps. You know, like, oh, like yeah, yeah, you know, these pulsing like veiny cock arms, it's just like right at the beginning. It's very <laughs> like, it's <laughs> it's right out of of Rambo two. Like like you you sent you sent that image to us. <laughs> on the, uh, the chat. and in retrospect in retrospect i ought to have included it in uh the posting but they're like they're literally like attempting in in this like shitty barely defined um poorly animated form of like like replicating that initial bicep curl and that's all you need to know about this cartoon oh, yeah. um it's it's like it's it really commits to like shirtless uh, yeah, this is where like this is where you get your shirtless Rambo. Even like when he's skiing, he'll wear like a like <laughs> something with cut off sleeves, right? Just because gotta stay warm somehow. But <laughs> otherwise, uh, yeah, I I and the the fights about this are all fucking dumb though. Like none none of this is. What's he fighting? I I, yeah. I don't understand the stakes. Like Cobra makes sense to me. No, this is like um, this is like uh, 
theme park tour of the movies and like certain scenes that are like sort of sanitized for kids. Like, you know, like there's a torture scene, but he's just like hanging over a pit while, while like cobras snap at his feet and like until he can get to his knife. <laughs> um, it's got like a serious, like, it's just like the white savior version of Rambo for kids. Like, just like, you know, bring it down to base propaganda elements. Oh shit! I'm looking up this this lady uh, or whoever this is, this Barbara Barbara Chain, who uh, she wrote He Man, she wrote Rambo, she wrote Mask. Fucking you, oh, Mask, man! Mask. Yeah, oh. yeah, Mask. Is, I would love to talk about Mask at some point. Oh, we'll mask is dope sure. as I mean, shit. Yeah, maybe we'll do Inhumanoids and Mask. But the, nice. Is the show good? Oh, it, but it's insane. Mask? I don't remember it being very good. It gets a good it gets a good review. I'm on IMDb right now. Seven... I thought it got a bad I thought it got a good rap because the toys were fucking epic. I remember that the, the theme song was awesome. Mask! Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. And yeah. I remember I looked at when we lived together, I looked up an episode on YouTube and like they had these insane like it was the sort of like G.I. Joe moral thing at the end, but they would just be like don't get into vans with strangers because they will molest you. And they're just so blatant about it. It was Jesus. weird to see. I'm just going to put the mask theme in the background so we can yeah, all enjoy do it. it. <laughs> my, my, my mask. <laughs> <laughs> in humanoids, da, 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 had a, da, da, da. actually had a fire intro, too. Oh, that, to that, do. oh, it starts off with a robot voice. We need the best agents for this mission. Anyway, I'm not going to put these through that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen. Yeah, we got to talk about not, masks. They're, they're not fucking around in the 80s. That's no. the bottom line here. No, no, no but, they but they were, when they were fucking around, it was on this Rambo cartoon, which is, like, it's, it's like, I, I'm i not used to using the word generic with um, 1980s cartoons because many of them weren't. They were always weird uh, and, and had their own, like, shit going on. But this one's so derivative. That's true. There's like a creepy kid in this one too. Oh, that kid! I love how Rambo just bullies that kid. What is he? <laughs> Refresh kid, my like, memory. What is? He breaks into the he breaks into their barracks and he's like, he's like, I just want to join the army and like they laugh at him. <laughs> he's like, yeah. you want to be a soldier? You got to go to school. He's like, really? To be a soldier? Yeah. And he's like, also, you know what a B and E is? <laughs> That's right. You just did that. That sucks. Yeah. I I have no I don't like honestly these things washed over me like uh Yeah, that's again. that's like, totally fair. Absolutely nothing happened. Uh there was so many commercial because we watched it on Daily Motion. And so I felt like every like 5 seconds I was watching a commercial about dishwashing detergent and then watching the same commercial about dishwashing washing detergent. Mm. I and figured I, out the uh, trick to Daily Motion. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you watch Oh, you're the, good with IT. If you ah fuck, <laughs> if you watch the, if you watch it upright, like without turning it on landscape in a really uncomfortable way, and just let the fucking whole screen of the Daily Motion website wash over you, the ads uh-huh. don't play. Oh wow. Okay. Like yeah, well, watch, pro it, tip, watch it. Pro tip, audience. Pro tip: watch it tiny and upright, and there's no ads. That's good to know. Yeah. Then you too could enjoy Rambo. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, two inch by two inch. We got what we needed out of it, which, which was just really to see the the cult. You know, how how did Rambo, as a phenomenon that like children watch, get turned into cartoons? Like it's the only R-rated franchise. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't even have to say this, but no other R-rated franchise has been turned into a, a Saturday morning cartoon. So our RoboCop did, didn't RoboCop it? did. Yeah, yeah. Oh like, my I, God, a... you're right. My bad. That's true. I think Total Recall ended up with toy. Yeah, but RoboCop had it. Oh t- God, Total animated Recall. Total Recall added toys, man. <laughs> yeah. Fucked up. Uh, but this is 1988. 1988 RoboCop is is super uh, animated series is coming out. So like, something's happening in America. Like something beautiful. So, yeah, something. Like like, and Police Academy is at the same time. They're just getting all these like really inappropriate non-child related. Fit franchises but like it's kind of ultimately they're aimed at lazy boomer parents 
who are just like, oh, the kids love this. Well, I just love that. Right. Well, just give it to the kids. Uh, and it's it, like it was yeah, Beetlejuice even like Beetlejuice wasn't not that Beetlejuice was like horrific or anything, but like. What was the rating on that, James? Like, that's not a no. That's like a PG thirteen. That's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it was yeah. PG thirteen as well. I okay. I yeah. think because because any of the violence that happened in that or was just like in a bizarro world, so it got a pass. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not a scary movie, man. Like violence can happen in movies as long as it's not scary, according to the rating, right? Like I don't. It 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 comes down to attitude and tension and shit like that you know if it feels yeah. a little weird and, I, you know? and, and I numbers think of chunks if it's like human on human numbers of chunks <laughs> like like if it's like if a human's killing another human or there's like brutal violence being acted against another human that's that's not a no go that's going to be your rated r but that if it's if the violence is enacted on like fucking some claymation creature or some shit or a robot it's okay yeah which puts me in mind of what we'll be addressing next week uh, on the no, no, I guess it's the week after. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was gonna do try to do a transition, uh, one of a rare transition, explaining what we'll do next week. But I I fucking that didn't work. Mm. I was thinking of nice. I was thinking of white white lotus, not a not appropriate for for. I don't know. Actually, no. Are we doing white? Are we doing White Lotus next week? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do. We're gonna do White Lotus season two next week. But yeah, yeah. It, so there we're is talk no about Rambo the, transition. I don't think. No, I think I think the what you were what we were saying about the violence done to people and the stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, that all works. I'm looking forward to the White Lotus cartoon. <laughs> Action Coming figures. Soon. Mm-hmm. I really want to see the action figure of that, like that lady, like fucking clocking her head off a boat. And she falls <laughs> to her death. <laughs> hey, that's a spoiler. Whoa, what lady? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Analysis. Confirmation of enemy. Venom. Recognized course of action. Assembled fast. Give me the data on the best agents for this mission. <laughs> Mobile Armored Strike Command. Right on.